Hello everybody, welcome back to Debunking the Difficulty. Today I'm bringing a game that, uh... Yeah, it's a little ballsy. A little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, ambitious to try and debunk the difficulty of this one. But you know what? I'm feeling a little bit crazy today, so let's give it a shot. So I took some notes here. Let me, um... This is, uh, Ghosts and Goblins for the NES. One of the most notoriously, famously difficult games on the NES has such a reputation for being nah, nearly impossible and um, we're gonna try and uh, debunk the difficulty here a little bit maybe find out this game maybe it's actually beatable you know maybe maybe you can beat it maybe it's not as bad as its reputation says it is now I always have people getting mad like you didn't debunk the difficulty it's still hard well let me just reiterate for this series for me, it's not about necessarily turning something difficult into something easy. It's more about taking away the notion that the game is as bad as people think it is. So there are a few things I want to point out before we even get started in this game. Alright, so check this out, you guys. So this is, uh, this is going to be a hoot. I'm actually pretty excited for this. There's my knife. Hey, my first point. In the very beginning of the game, you can just grind whatever item you want. I think you can just stand right here and zombies will keep spawning and you can wait until you get the item you like. Whether it's the knife or the fire. Um, whatever item you're into, I think you can just kind of find it in the beginning without really having to worry about it too much. So I think everybody knows the knife memes. Get the knife, get the knife, get the knife. And you know what? The knife is great. I would say get go ahead and get the knife. However, I would also say you don't actually need the knife. But I would get the knife. The fire is actually a pretty good weapon too in its own right. But I think the knife or the fire, either way, pretty good weapon to have. Now one thing you need to know is that in this game, when you die, you never lose the weapon you have. So check this out. I'm just gonna die for no reason. Ugh. 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 Now, the worst thing about dying in this game is every time you die, it makes you watch the stupid loading screen. What a waste of time. But look, I come back and I still have the knife. So that is one of the really nice things about this game is that it don't matter how many times you die, you're not going to lose your weapon. I have three other details I want to share with you guys for why this game is actually kind of nice. Number one, this game has infinite continues. There are no real game overs. For some reason, when you die a couple times, it does say game over. But the game over does absolutely nothing. It just starts you right where you left off, which is actually pretty forgiving for an NES game. On top of that, this game is actually super short. It is not a very long game. So between infinite continues, no real game overs, and the game not being super long, I don't know, maybe it's beatable. Maybe it is debunkable. I don't know. Now the game does have a timer, which is annoying. So you gotta watch out for that. All right, so for stage one, this level is not difficult. Really just hold right and shoot stuff. I don't really have much advice besides just do it. But I mean, it's really not hard. <laughs> it's really not hard. All right, see this guy? This is a uh, Red Devil or Armamir. He has a weird name. I call him a Red Devil. I don't know what his actual name is. This guy right here is responsible for 90% of this game's difficulty. If they took him out of the game, this game, nobody would even talk about this game. So check this out. See that? See how easy? If you know how to take those guys down, they're super easy. Now, most people don't know how to fight them, and if you don't know how to fight them, they tear you up. What you want to do is jump away from him as soon as he swoops down. And that will cause him to arc, to arc upwards and go over you. If you mistime the jump, he's going to dive into you. Here, let me show you. So if you don't time the jump right, this is what happens. He bodies you. But if you jump at the right time, you can kite him, and it's no problem. So learn how to fight this guy, and you will be good to go, my friends. No problem whatsoever. You know what? The knife is pretty good. I would just get the knife. The knife is pretty good. 
Alright, so the rest of the level is not too difficult. Um, there is a bonus armor here. I can't show you right now because it only spawns if you don't have your armor. So if you got hit at this point, just jump right here and it'll spawn an extra armor. See that? See how my time reset? That's something I forgot about, but you hit a certain checkpoint, or every time you hit a checkpoint in the level, your timer does restart, which is really nice. And this goes back to my previous points. Once, actually I don't think I ever said this, once you get a checkpoint in this game, you never lose that checkpoint. Which is incredibly nice. Like, I don't think I can stress enough how rare that is, especially in NES games. Usually, especially if you game over, it will not let you keep a checkpoint. But in this game it does, which is pretty cool. Now, these guys are kind of annoying, but if you keep moving, it's not too bad. Like, this, it's really not, I don't think I really need to go over too much, and I'm already at the boss. So the boss is easy, you can spawn him, you just shoot stuff at him, and just kind of kite him. And he goes down so fast, and that is the end of stage one. So just taking stock here, we're moving on to stage two. There are only like six levels in this game, so we're already like, we're, we're super far already, man. Stage two is hard in the second half, but not in the first. So in the first half, you just hold right. Um, jump over this guy, fall down here, jump, jump, and just like that, you are already at the first checkpoint of stage two. Um, every time you die moving forward, you'll respawn right here, which is great. So I'm gonna take a death, get my armor back. So you're gonna respawn here. This is actually one of the hardest areas in the game. Um, I think it's the most uh, discouraging part of the game, and it's a lot of the reason why this game is considered so difficult. I think most people don't get past this part. Um, I do have some tricks and stuff that I'm gonna try to show you. So let's get debunking here. So getting through here, try to keep your armor. That's definitely preferable, obviously. So we're gonna try to get through here. Um, the cool thing about the goblins is that when you hit them, they get stunned. As you saw, I was hitting that guy and he couldn't move, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna skip that goblin there, come to the far right, come up here. There's actually a bonus armor up here. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. I wanna show you guys the bonus armor. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm alive. I wanna show you guys the bonus armor. Here we go, here we go. Check this out, check this out. Check this out. See that? This game has several hidden armor spots. Super, super mischievous dev armor stuff. So I'll try to show you some of the spots as we progress through the game. Now check this out. Come to the top right up here. I wanna show you guys actually right here. This is one of the cheapest areas in video game history. So these guys are, su it's so hard to get through here without taking damage and they force you to get a fire right here. And if you're a knife guy, you don't really want that fire. So it's like, what the heck? I don't want that fire, so let me show you what I do. It's a little risky, but it's more fun. And getting through the goblin part without getting hit is almost impossible anyways. So check this out. What you want to do is come up here, jump, spawn the bird, turn left, and then he'll knock you on top of the pillar. And then you just uh, jump down here and you skip that whole stupid goblin part on the left. Now, of course you lost your armor, which is unfortunate, but you don't you don't need it. And you might die here still anyways until you get it down, but I recommend doing this strategy. This part's not too bad. Every now and then you will get clipped by a bird or by one of those stupid white things. But kind of take your time through here. Try not to die, obviously. You know, you just kind of chill. Jump off here. And you got one more set of platforms coming up here before the boss. Jump down here, and now we're at the boss. Now the boss is simply two of the level one boss. So we're gonna do the same stuff. Kill one of them. I'm running out of time. And that's it. Not a hard boss. Now every now and then they might jump on top of you, something weird happens, you die. But try that a few times and you will get it. And that's about it. Stage three, you're gonna move left immediately. Duck. And that's how you avoid taking damage. 
All right, so this is another stage where we're gonna dive a checkpoint. So just go fast, hold right. I think I prefer to go up top. I think top maybe is a little bit easier. Kill this guy, jump. Keep going right. Wait for this guy to shoot. Actually, he doesn't shoot until you're in front of him, I guess. Okay, kill that guy and then a little bit more and then you are already at a checkpoint. So now you never have to play that red room <laughs> ever again. Well, never say never, I guess. All right, now this level is annoying. There's no getting around it, but use the same strategies to kill these guys. Remember, the key is to jump as they're swooping down. That is how you juke them. Take your time through here. One of the most annoying things about this part is how the hot dogs will spawn randomly. So just be careful because they do come out of nowhere. Kill this guy. I don't even think you have to jump on that one. I think he just swoops over you anyways because of your positioning. Sometimes you can use the elevation differences to your advantage. See hot dog spawning. Go slow, take your time. Just gonna go up here, kill the hot dog. Kill the hot dog. Chillin'. I'm gonna go up here. I think going up is easier. Um, I think some dudes are gonna spawn. Yeah. Ooh, I got hit, okay. Interesting. We'll try, we'll try to roll with this. I can actually show you guys something if I don't die, so. See this guy? Killed him, easy, super easy. Didn't even take damage from any of the red devils. So check this out, you're gonna go forward, you're gonna jump off the ledge. Duck. Duck right there, see that? It's a weird trick. It spawns an armor. When you duck on that particular ledge, it spawns an armor and you can come down here and get your armor back. We got one more dude. Hit him. Time it. Time the jump. And that's it, you're golden. You are golden. Jump over the crap. You know what I said earlier about the knife? Get the knife. The knife is great. I didn't even, when I was uh, researching this game and uh, kind of playing through it before, I didn't even use the knife, and I was like, oh, I don't even even need the knife, but now I'm using the knife, and I'm like, yeah, the knife is pretty good. All right, so here we got the boss. Check this out. Check this out. For this guy, you're just gonna, like, kind of kite him a bit. Like this. Kind of like the same technique as the uh, Red Devils. You know what? I think the fire is better against him. I think the fire is honestly a better weapon for that boss. I mean, I still killed him. So, that level is not as bad as you would think. Like I said, once you get the red devil killing down, and especially with that hidden armor at the very end, you should be able to get through that one, no problem. Uh, one other thing I want to show you guys is that sometimes you will get hit by an invisible projectile. It didn't happen to me last time, but the way to avoid it if this happens to you is to jump right here. You just jump right there, and you'll jump over it. It's really annoying, and I don't know why it happens, but it does happen sometimes. See, if you have the extra armor, you can just tank a hit from that dude and take him down, no problem. Alright, so this is stage four, and this one is like, kind of a breath of fresh air. Just because, I mean, the platforming here isn't great. It kind of sucks, honestly. But it's not hard, it's just, you know, you gotta jump on this thing and then come over here, and then you're already done with the platforming part. You have to fight a red devil, so you're gonna jump over the red devil here. Same tricks, and... No problem. Now, going through the bridge, you just need to be careful about the fire that pops up. There are a few weird hazards that will reveal themselves. So jump over the flames. Watch out for all the dudes spawning everywhere. Um, I don't know how to get hit by the fire right there. <laughs> it looked like I was standing in it. Oh, we got another red devil here. I forgot about this one. Okay, he's dead. Jump over that. I think it turns you into a frog or something. And just like that, you're at the boss, and guess what? They recycle the same stupid boss again. Wait. Wait, where's the boss? Dude, the game glitched out and there's no boss. What the heck? 
They were mad that I was debunking the game and they just glitched me out, dude. I have never seen this happen before. Oh, that doesn't turn you into a frog. That's points. There's something that turns you into a frog. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. <laughs> I'm a freaking frog. Don't hit that one. That one sucks. Look! He spawned! Wait, do you have to hit the frog to spawn him? What the hell? If that's how it works, I didn't know that. That's crazy. You know what? I think the knife is not good against the dragon. So I'm pretty sure the fire is way better against the dragon. So keep that in mind if you're struggling with the dragon. Try the fire. So believe it or not, there's only two levels left, you guys. I told you guys this game is short and we've had like no trouble so far. Aw. Uh, this one has a lot of dudes flying around that are trying to mess with you. General strategy is going to be to take down these flying guys as soon as you see them. Try to take your time with those guys because, see, they can get you, man. There's so many flyers. And they'll get you, dude. So many freaking flyers. There's a hidden armor in this stage, too. So I'm going to go ahead and try to show it to you guys. See, this axe will fall. Do not get it. It's a trap. You can skip that red devil completely. Keep going up. Our good friend, the goblin ogre dude, is back. Kill him. We've got one up here we need to deal with. This one is super obnoxious. All you have to do is lure him away from the ladder, and then you can kill him. Some They walk around randomly, so sometimes you have to wait them out. But if you can get him to walk away from the ladder, you're good to go. And this is where you get your free armor. So even if you got hit, you ride on this platform and then you get a free armor right here. Boom. All right, so here's a good example of like having to wait out the goblin. So he's walking back and forth right on top of the ladder. To my knowledge, there's like nothing you can do except wait for him to move away. Come on. Come on, there we go. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. There you go, buddy. There you go. There you go. So you're gonna keep making your way up, dudes. You know, you got another goblin right here. Everything's pretty chill. I think we're almost out of here already, to be honest. Yeah, we're like almost out of here. Hot dogs are trying to get you. The hot dogs are the worst. Yeah, we're at the top. So here's the boss. I think this guy's name is Satan. <laughs> If I recall, is it Satan? I think it's Satan. It's like a boss version of the Red Devil. But ironically, the boss is even easier than the regular enemy. He doesn't even hit you. The big difference between the boss and the regular Red Devils is that the boss doesn't even swoop down enough to hit you. You can just duck underneath them. And just like that, we're on the final level of Ghosts and Goblins. I crap you not, just like that. Are we debunking this game? I At first, when I had the idea of doing this, I was like, oh, I don't know if you can debunk this game, but it's actually not that hard. All right, so you're going to go up this ladder. You're going to kill this freaking idiot. Once again, they're recycling the same freaking enemies. We're going to come up here, keep on going, and guess what? They're recycling the dragon, too. So we're going to kill this stupid dragon. Stupid dragon. There he goes. And then you think you go... Where do you go? I forgot where you go. We need to get the freaking shield to spawn. You go up here? How do you get the shield to spawn? Where's the freaking shield? Should be a shield around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So you need the shield. So go to the ladder on the left and spawn it. Alright, now this part coming up is one of the hardest parts in the game. For real. And there's a free armor right here. I'm gonna show you guys. I just want to show you guys, because you're probably going to need it. Most likely, you'll get hit by the dragon. Um, I want to show you guys this armor, if I can freaking get it to spawn. What the heck? Alright, I'm going to spawn the skeleton. No, come on, come on. Okay, so I got hit by the skeleton. I'm going to go backwards, like, oh, I got hit. And guess what? Wait, <laughs> how do you do it? I know there's an armor here, man. Don't mess with me. There it is. You have to jump in the corner to activate it. So cryptic, dude. So cryptic. All right, so this right here is objectively probably the hardest part in the entire game. It's super cheap, 
with really obnoxiously placed enemies, goblins pooping on you, blocking the ladders. It's got red devils freaking everywhere. There is a speedrun strat that lets you skip all this, but it's not very rep it's not very uh, accessible to a average player, so I'm not going to teach it to you. So we're going to take it nice and slow. All right. The thing about this is you have to be patient with the ogres because they block the freaking ladders, as you guys know. One thing you need to know is do not hit the red devils on the side. Do not hit them. You can bypass all of them, but they're positioned in such a way that you will accidentally hit them and activate them. And if you do that, you're pretty much screwed. Right, I'm going to try not to time out here. So kill the skeletons from far away. All right. So we're going to activate this guy just like that. And you're going to fight him the exact same way you would fight any other red devil just like that. Remember, it's all about timing that jump when he's coming down. That is the most important aspect. I'm gonna time out. I'm gonna time out, you guys. There's no way I make this in time, is there? Yeah, that, that little spot right there is the hardest part in the game. You just have to get that down. And then you have to fight two of these guys, which I'm probably not gonna be able to do, so I'm gonna try and activate both of them. <laughs> I'm gonna time out, dude. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, I'm gonna time out. I'm gonna time out. Come on, man. Come on. Ah, oh, I tried. I tried. I was gonna time out. All right, now I'm gonna shred this stage. I'm um, using all the information that I just went over. Oh, yeah, this reminds me of something. So, one detail that I remember I don't know if it was ABGN or somebody going over was when you die in this stage, you have to keep the shield, and the shield sucks for these enemies in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the javelin because I think it's a little bit better and then we can just get the shield back later. Because I think, yeah, the javelin works fine for killing that dude. All right, so for the dragon with the javelin, it's actually kind of difficult. I wonder if it's better with the shield. I'm going to try the shield. Yeah, shield is better. So I go ahead and pick up that shield and just kite him just like that. Um, he's a lot easier with the knife and the fire, I think. But that strategy seems to work if you end up dying in this stage and then have to use the shield. Also, I forgot to mention the fire here is a troll because you need the shield to beat the final boss. Or is it the devils at the end of the stage? I can't remember. You need the shield, though, to beat the game. So don't get the fire. Maybe it gives you a new shield. I don't actually know what happens if you get to the end of the fire. Let's find out. I think you need the shield to beat the game. But does it just screw you if you don't have it. I don't actually know what happens. So two of these guys are super easy. I don't have a shield. Does it just give you a shield on the final boss? It must, right? It must. This weapon has no effect. Try again. Get a shield. What? That's what happens. And it restarts the level. Wait, it sends you all the way. Wait, 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 wait. How far back? It sends you all the way back to this one! Wow! Well, at least we know now. See, wouldn't have been a complete episode of debunking if I hadn't explored what happens there, because that would have happened to one of you poor saps. Alright, so for this boss, you get to fight the same boss as the last level, just again. Because they were so creative, they just said, hey, we're not going to make a new boss. We're just going to make you fight the same boss twice. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I don't know how he didn't kill me right there, to be honest. But these guys are pretty easy, man. If you just take your time, you can fight them separately, too. Um, I would recommend fighting them separately. Not at the same time, because if you aggro both of them, double projectiles. And just like that, we're moving on to the final boss. The final boss is pathetically easy. Uh, the only way you can hit him is by hitting him in the head, so you have to jump and shoot. He's so easy. Completely... Oh, I got hit? Damn it. Talking smack and I got hit? I mean, I don't know. He's pretty easy, I think. You just kind of jump and throw the shield. If you die, you restart right at the boss, so it doesn't even matter. And then it says something. It was like, hey, gotcha. Here, play the game again. 
So for your purposes, I would say, you know, you can just stop playing the game right there and be like, okay, cool, I beat Ghosts and Goblins. Didn't get the best ending, but, you know, good enough for me. So they make you play the game twice. And from what I understand, there are two primary differences between the first and second playthrough. The first difference is that the enemies, I believe, move more quickly. So the zombies here, see how much faster they are? Their walking speed. I think that's uh, the big difference. The second difference is that I think enemies who shoot projectiles shoot them faster as well. So let's go find one real quick. Oh, Okay, yeah, see that plant guy up there? Yeah, see him shoot? He's shooting more rapidly than he did in the first playthrough. So I, th I think those are the only differences between the two modes. Um, I think the projectiles going faster is definitely probably the hardest part. But other than that, the gameplay is exactly the same. You'll apply the exact same principles and strategies. You might die a little bit more just because... Oh, wow, see the Red Devil shot much faster, too. So this will be a little more challenging, but ultimately you're just going to do the same stuff. Get the armor. I'm about to time out, but guess what? I got my time back because I hit a checkpoint. Pretty cool, eh? I think the bosses are exactly the same. Yeah, still super easy. The goblins walk faster too, which is not necessarily a big deal because that also means they walk away faster. So when you're luring them away from the ladders, it can make it a little easier. I think it ultimately balances out. So I've been running through the game just to see if anything is notably different. And so far it's pretty chill, like nothing crazy. Main thing is that the projectiles from the Red Devils are much more aggressive. Is the dragon faster? He is faster, right? You see how fast I killed him? I, I think something I didn't mention before was you need to hit the dragon in the head. And he doesn't take that many hits, but if you only hit his body, uh, it takes forever to kill him. This time I didn't have to turn into a frog to spawn the boss. So that was definitely a bug or something before. Straight up. Okay, I'm going into the final two levels here on the second playthrough. And it is a little bit harder with the projectiles and stuff. But if you got through it one time, you can absolutely do it again. Kite the freaking dude. Try not to get hit. Wow, that was so sloppy. I didn't get hit. He didn't seem much harder than the other playthrough. Play it safe. Play it safe. The shield kills the projectiles, too. These guys are way easier with the shield because you can kill his projectile. He's actually really easy. I didn't even realize that the first time. Yeah, we're chilling, man. We're straight up chilling. Look at all this time. I got a minute and a half. That's it, dude. I bet the final boss is just as easy the second time. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. Let's see. What's he up to? What's he up to? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Congratulation! This story is happy end. Thank you. Being the wise and courageous knight that you are, you feel strongeth welling in your body. Return to starting point. Challenge again. They couldn't even proofread this shit. Uh, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I was really shocked to go through this game again and break it down and really be like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Infinite continues means you never have to give up unless you just don't want to play the game anymore. And the difficulty of this game really just comes down to a couple annoying, obnoxious design choices by the developers. Typically, it's just really stupid placement of the goblin dudes who camp ladders combined with the red devils. Really, really, really just stupid. But as you saw, if you master handling the red devils and you're patient with the ogres, sometimes you get unlucky in this game. That's just how it is. There's hot dogs spawning everywhere and stuff. Sometimes you get clipped. You make an error. You make a mistake. I ain't saying this game is easy, but what I am saying is this game is not as bad 
as we thought. Be sure to check out the other debunking the difficulty videos. We've got, I think, eight, eight or maybe nine. I think this is eight. And they're all phenomenal episodes, let me tell you. Full playlist link is in the description. Thumbs up, subscribe, share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I sure did. Have a great freaking day.